is really an example of a designer, a creative soul in the 21st century, the world that's yours. She was born in Hangzhou, China, which is the silk center and artistic heart of uh, China. She's a graduate of the uh, Academy of Fine Arts in China. She came to New York in 1985 with no knowledge of the English language, only the passion and the determination to succeed. And that is an example for all of you. And her, her creative talent was recognized after much uh, dedication and uh, many jobs, which I won't go into because I want to turn over the podium to her, but just to create the background of the valuable person we have here for you because of the world you're entering, and she already is there. And uh, she will become one of China's uh, first uh, Asian to uh, uh, enter the world of uh, globalization because she has already established an atelier in Shanghai and also one in New York, which is the ideal way for anyone creative, which she will talk to you about, should do. And uh, her signature uh, design when she was here was really inventive. She was working in a silk, uh, for a very famous silk company here, and uh, they gave her uh, cuttings, a uh, leftover. She pl permanent pleated them, made scarves. Henry Bendel fell in love with them. They were printed pleated scarves. They were so successful, Bendel asked her to turn them into blouses, which continued. She won the, uh, uh, international Award, the Fashion Group's International Award as the Rising Star. She has many, many other awards. Uh, and uh, I, I could read that looks like a list of the who's who here. And she has museum exhibitions and collections which she will tell you about. And now I'm talking fast because I want Miss Hanfang to come here and take the podium. Thank you very much. Thank you, dear. Thank you. Hi. Oops. <laughs> you know, I always very excited to come to FIT. Can I take this down? Yes, you can take it off. Okay, okay. Here. I don't know how to do this. Okay. Because um, in the 1985, when I come to New York, the, I thought I want to be a fashion designer. So I came to FIT to take in class. Of course, I failed. <laughs> so I couldn't understand what the professor talked about it. So I quit, went to looking for job, thought sell fa uh, fashion, went to Bloomingdale. So many years later, I, for somehow I in fashion business again, when Alice asked me to speak in FIT, I always get very excited because the, the school, I always want to be a student here, but I never able in the past. So anyway, so that's why I'm very excited to come to here to see everyone. I'm only in New York for 10 days. I'm leaving again this is Saturday. So. <laughs> well, uh, from 1993, I started a fashion uh, collection in New York. So I do a runway I did in Bryant Park for many years. Then after September 11, a lot of change. So I began only uh, show my collection in my showroom, 39th Street, until 2004, we opened the store in Shanghai and uh, at the three in the bun. And uh, after 20 years, go back to Shanghai, just make me so excited. A, a country for me is like familiar, but not familiar. So after all, I stayed in China for a little bit. I just got so excited. I closed my New York office and I moved the whole sample room and production design, everything in Shanghai. So now every month, I between 
New York and Shanghai just uh, traveling. But uh, today, I actually want to tell you all the most exciting thing actually I did last year is a design. Uh, work with uh, Anthony Mingala, the movie director, did the uh, English Patient, Tom and did the Mr. Ripley in the Cold Mountain. He directed the, um, uh, an opera called Madame Butterfly. I did the whole entire costume in London for English National Opera House. And the whole one year experience just really make me excited, learn so much about the theater. So this is a, between fashion and the theater, a little extra. So last year, September 5th is the opening day. It was a huge success. Now we just got a award called the Oliver Award in London is a new production award. But the best news is this opera come to New York September 25th in the Met. So I hope everybody will come to the, the opera house to see the opera because uh, the Metropolitan Opera also had a new management under Peter Gilb, the management. So they have a very, very cheap ticket for $15 for special for students. So I hope everybody want to go to see it. So, so right now I want to show everybody is this uh, total new experience for me from uh, doing from fashion cross to theater, then from theater cross to the fashion. And uh, when Anthony Miguela hired me to do a fashion, just because, uh, the, the costume, just because he saw and he bought some clothes from a shop for his wife and that he liked so much, so he called me up at his office and wanted to meet me. So that's how we become friends and begin work together. So for the beginning ones, you know, doing opera, I never, I don't even know how to present it. So it's a kind of really interesting, the whole process. So now I'm going to show everyone. So this is actually is the, can everybody see? It's a little dark, right? Yeah, maybe. So it's, this is Anthony Minghella, and uh, that's, beginning you can see this is the idea. They try to figure out what do they want to do for this uh, butterfly, how to make a new things, different than traditional opera. And uh, so the stage designers, Michael Levine from Toronto, that time is a, uh, 2004, November, we all in Toronto, and uh, he presented this a small like little shoe box to show us uh, how use the cherry flowers, how to make the stage going up with a big mirror in the back, how of showing the two people fall in love, you know, the whole, the cherry flower scene. I don't know if anybody saw the, the butterfly. This is a completely new idea because um, in the traditional, you probably only see in Japan in, with the tatami, with the traditional costume. This, they use the Japanese idea, um, puppeteria, and uh, with the dancer to input with the whole thing. So this is all the dancer with the puppeteria to figure out how to, that time we tried to figure out how to present in this new way to make the butterfly almost like a film. So every, everywhere you see it, you can, you can see, basically every moment you see it, you can see something going on in the theater. So this is actually is a, I, the whole vid, um, slice I put together actually for London University the day before the butterfly opening. So we showed in London, showed the students that end up that a lot of students get very excited when to see the theater. So this is a little boy we found in the, the you know, coffee shop. And he's a half Japanese, half English. 
So we thought we found that this boy can be uh, in the film because Anthony tried to make a film beginning to use a film with the theater together. So this is the beginning of my sketch. In the back, you can see the, for the gauge was closed, the pattern. Is, this is my collage, how to make it, is to presenting to the theater because I travel so much. You see that before is the collage, now the reality. This is uh, actually the shoot for the Harper Hub Queen. So you can see all these details, you know, with the... Actually, it's interesting at that time, I don't, um, Anthony really want to make it, it's kind of like a kimono look, but want some change, but not huge dramatic change. The only thing I can do is the pattern. Uh, I design all the fabric pattern with the color. So the color in the pattern, and uh, you see it's not very traditional, become very contemporary. So the shape sometimes it looks very, uh, tradition, but the, the color become a huge difference. So I de designed the hat because everybody will use the Japanese hair. I just thought use a paper to making the geisha look. So everybody have a hat almost. <laughs> Actually, is you know. So for me, that is a very contemporary. So we made it. Then this is all the hair piece for the decoration. Use the fabric and made it. Some use the paper and the ribbons. So this is a male hair. Actually, it, was, it looks so great because it actually, it's quite difficult because in the uh, in, you know, English National Opera has everybody English. So you have to make them look like Japanese is very, very difficult. So I thought, actually, this is great. I love this hat. This is uh, like we use uh, based on the 18th cent uh, 17th century. Japanese a traditional hat, we take that change to another things. National uh, Opera House is amazing. They, all my collage, what I did, they made exactly, exactly silk screen. They made everything, just it was amazing. So this is a singer. She's uh, called Mary Plazas. She's seen the butterfly. So also Anthony thought is very, very romantic for uh, make a geisha, the dressing the geisha, and also undress the geisha. So that's why we add um, uh, underwear because I have a uh, one part of the scene. The love scene is the she got undressed, go to bed. So that was very challenging. So we made the whole evening clothes, like the evening uh, nightgown for her. So this is a part of it. So I make they make a little. Uh, this is all sample for the work. Then we take to Shanghai. They made everything in Shanghai. So this is all like a muslin to try on her, see if like or not like. So this is the actual piece after. 
So we bought from China, all mixed different pink and uh, different flowers on, on her. The idea is coming from the cherry flowers, so. And also, you saw the collage before. This wrapped up a lot of fabric because the beginning, and we also have a dancer come out because Anthony feels it's very difficult for audience to see a 45 years old English woman singing there. So he found an 18 years old uh, Asian woman dancing. So looks like a butterfly. This is a the dancer. Then the real singer come out, so make you imagine that's the butterfly. <laughs> so it's quite interesting. So you see this is a silk kimono with all different flower attachment all by hand in border on the on the so this is the idea beginning I have to make a butterfly the wedding is a red wedding coat. And uh, actually, after, we didn't really use it because um, you can see later, actually, she looked great on the red coat with everything red. But it looks like very good, but Anthony didn't really like because she looked like a mature geisha. She don't look like the 16 years old. You see, this is a... So end up we have to cancel this code. I should spend so much energy to it. And in this code actually going to show this year, December, I have a show in Cooper Hewitt, the tri triennial show. So this code going to be there, so everybody will see it. I think the most difficult is to make a, a English woman look like an Asian woman. <laughs> it's very difficult. <laughs> this is where in the one month of a rehearsal. So we have to try everything on the stage to see looks good or not good. I'm sorry, my bad photograph here, so it's not very clear. <laughs> so this is a collage I made for second act. The second act is um, Churchill Sons become, you know, the husband left to America, and she was waiting for the husband, and they're very poor. So she used, ideas, she used the kimono to need a Western clothes. So for her, it's very Western, but for Western thinking, it's very East. So that's why this clothes is kind of have a East-West feeling, you know. So this is for second act. This is a Hermes Suzuki. So puppeteer is close. This is a for two for the puppet. She's the designer in the Opera House. <laughs> it's interesting, everybody tell me after I finished the opera, they never saw so many color in that opera house. So they said ev the whole entire color made everybody so happy, so I was very glad. 
this is the idea which I put together for the prince. I don't know if everybody knows the butterfly story. Is um, The love story really is about that the husband left and the Japanese prince want to marry her. She don't want to. She want to wait for her husband and end up her husband come back with American wife. So that's why it made everybody cry. So here we try to figure out, everybody use a paper hat, how going to give it to Cho Cho son a hat. This is the outfit for the marriage broker. This is the other color we try to make for the wedding clothes and also you can see they matching all from the drawing, from the collage, they match exactly. Actually, some is very complicated to make. This is the blood. In the end, she suicide. So we made this blood become a big butterfly. So this is a part of it. This is all the different cousins and to the families close. This is the one dancer taking his time to do Tai Chi in the break time. You can see from before the pattern, now they put on the, this is for Cho Cho Sun's one uncle, for the wedding outfit. This is uh, the American, that's the Pinkerton, that's her husband. So this is where within London have uh, with everybody within a photo shoot for Harper Cream. And she's the choreographer for all the dancer and uh, Puppeteer. This is two puppeteer. They are designed. They made also the little uh, boys and made everything for it. So now you can see on the stage. That's the before you see the Asian dancer. That's how it started the, the theater. So you can see already the mirror, the reflection of the...
so you can see from the collage until you know on the real on the bodies what to look like. Try to move a little, you know, that was a little too long. I'm going to make a little shorter to show you the end. <laughs> so that's the, the prince. I loved this outfit. Now you can see all the hair, everything is a paper made. try to sh just try to show you a little bit everything that's it then you can see before she die <laughs> bad photography, but <laughs> otherwise it's so beautiful. They have uh, all these uh, paper birds flying with a dancer coming out. It was so beautiful. Be here is a she die, then with a butterfly come out. You see the. become so important to enrich the whole play. It was amazing. So that's it. So that's, I hope everybody come to, um, come to the September to see the opera. <laughs> what? Yeah, I think uh, maybe it's, um, I don't really know, but I just the only thing I know the new management they try to do is to make, because the opera is not everybody, especially young people, not every young people 
you know, enjoy to go to see it. Also, it's super expensive. So now they try to make it. It's like a fifteen dollars. It's a really great. So, so one everybody can come to see it. So that's it. <laughs> so if anybody have a questions or whatever, you can ask me. And uh, s otherwise, just I will see you guys September. <laughs> Oh, uh, fashion design. Right? Yeah, I'm uh, coming back again. We are just beginning to show the collection to all the department store for this holiday fall. So we start all over again. So it's very exciting time. So. Yes. What? Oh yeah, I I learned the graphic design. So I studied the graphic designs. So I never really learned fashion. So right now I'm in fashion, but in a way I think uh, my clothes. Uh, I hope every you know. Uh, I think I will let Alice know what I'm going going on. What I would love for everybody to to see what I do, you know. And because uh, right now I'm trying to make everything handmade and everything made in China to bring, to, to make the couture in China become happening, you know, because they have amazing craftsmen. And I really don't know how to make in pattern. I don't know how to sew. They only have ideas. So I see myself as an artist. That's why I do different things, do a museum project, to do theater project. Then also I love to do fashion. So the fashion part for me is fun. It's not very, maybe not, Trendy, but a kind of fun, you know. That's how I do. Want to be playful, so yeah. I don't think anybody know what I do, right? <laughs> so because if I'm very young, I'm much older. <laughs> I feel I have like a long history already. Then I also I don't really do. You know, I stopped to fashion show from 2001. So, and also before that, even I do a fashion show, I think uh, my follow-up is a very, very interesting follow-up. So only like a, a lot of artists maybe know, or art dealer knows, or architect people wears my clothes, or something like that. It's not very popular. I'm trying to to really try to get him know what's a public interest, you know, to make him more popular, you know, so. Waters. So I, you know, now I'm doing for yeah a couple of museum shows. So it's kind of interesting. I relate how the lifestyle, the furniture. I did the furniture show. I did the many different things. So now you're gonna see in Cooper here is a, a costume, also glass design, and also with a uh, pottery. So I have three different things. So. Yeah, so that's uh, December 9th, so I hope everybody come. <laughs> How many times? Uh, what do you mean? How much time? Okay, I did it one year. One year, one year. For me, yeah, but we travel all over the place because Anthony making this butterfly in the middle of also him making his movie. I'm in the middle also making collection for Shanghai stores. So, and the different, everybody, you know, like uh, Michael Levine designed a couple of different operas. So, 
And um, so it's a, everybody, so meet once a month, so we meet. So it all happened, just sometimes couldn't even believe it. That's why I did everything in collage, in computer. So I passed the whole information to English National Opera House design studio so they can continue. So if they have a question, they ask me, but they can continue to do it. Now, actually, the opera right now in Lithuania. Do you believe that? <laughs> so it's very f interesting. They're going to come to China as well. So. No, that's very true. I'm uh, very jealous about you guys. So young, so much energy, you know, just in such a great moment, you know, in the beginning of this century. So you can do so much. And uh, this whole time changing, I need so many young people to be part of it. I think if you believe what your dream, I think definitely you will make it. And uh, so <laughs> i see you guys soon. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Thank you.